In this video, we are going to enable our basic hardware into its programming mode by connecting it into our personal computer and be able to download our compiled program in hex or bin files into the STC8051 micro. I just want to make it sure that uh, we can do a real world of programming before we can proceed with other future videos for both hardware interfacing with its dedicated program and let's do that after my intro. I assume that you have the basic hardware already as discussed in episode 4, the hardware to get started with the micro, the LED, the 12 MHz crystal, and the USB ASP. The next thing to do now is to get the two software. Before you can use the USB to UART bridge, you need to install the driver into your PC. If you already use a USB ASP before, like the CP, 210X, you may not need to install it. Sometimes Windows will automatically install it. To find it out, plug the USB to UART bridge into your PC USB and it will inform you if you need to install the driver or not. You may also see in the control panel that you need to install the driver. If this is the case, search your USB to UART bridge example the CP210X and download it, install it, and once you install it, you're good to go. There is a need to DIY assemble the USB to UART bridge based on your starter hardware in episode 4. In here, I'm going to assemble it in relation to the DR100 control module, the official development board for the DR100 project. The USB to UART board comes with a level such as power levels or the P plus and the GND and the UART levels as TX short for transmit and RX short for receiver. The power will directly connected into the micro power P plus and GND while the UART line the USB TX will go to the micro RX and the USB RX will be connected into the micro TX. I'm using a cable here about 12 inches and I need to twist it so that the cable will improve the noise during the programming. Here is my real world cable. We're almost there guys. The other software you need is the STC ISP. ISP means in-system programming which is basically a term to program the micro while it's on the board. You can download it from the STC website www.stcmicro.com. I put the link below to directly download the STC ISP package. After downloading, put the package into your DR100 project file, uncompress it. Once done, find the STC icon Copy it into your desktop and from there, double click it to invoke the STC ISP program. Follow the recommended setting or the default setting. The most important thing is that check the auto reload the target file before each program, which means it will use the latest bin or hex file, which is important when you are developing the program. Currently, I'm still using Windows 7. The STC ISP version I'm using is the STC ISP B6.86D. If there is a new version, it will pop up and it will let you download the latest one. Let's find our target micro, the STC 90C 516RD Plus from the selection of type of MCU. You can scroll and select the correct MCU. Again, it is STC 90C516RD+. 
The STC ISP makes use of a COM port for communication to the macro. It will automatically check where is the USB to UART like the Silicon Lab CP210X chipset. If it will not appear automatically, you can press this COM button and then choose it from the COM port. You can see Silicon Lab CP210X USB to UART. The STC ISP will work on the power on, wherein the micro will go for an internal reset, and this is where the communication begins. This is the reason why there is a switch on the schematic diagram to cause the plus 5 volt supply to disconnect and reconnect the plus 5 volt supply. We'll go to go, guys. Let me demonstrate the connectivity using the DR100 control module. Point the mouse and check MCU on the STC ISP, then click it within 2 seconds, pushing the switch to apply the plus 5 volt supply, and there you are. The STC ISP software can tell you if it can communicate to your micro. Well, congratulations! From here, let's try to download a hex file or bin file into our micro. This is our program 06. What it does is to blink the LED connected at P3.6 for every second, very similar to our program number 2 in our simulation program. Remember that guys? If you don't remember, you simply go back to program number 2 and let's see the simulation and what our program can do. First, turn off the power of the DR100 control module using the designated switch. Scroll the mouse and point it into the STC ISP open code file. Navigate to your PC folder and find the file P3.6 Blink Real Hardware, for example. Once done, scroll the mouse into the download program, then click it. Within 2 seconds, apply the power into the control module and you will see the program is downloading with the bar indicator. Now, we can see the LED is blinking. That's awesome, isn't it? We can see a real-world program execution now on the LED display. Guys, once we are able to establish a successful connection of our development board into our PC, in my case, I'm using the official development board, the DR100W control module, it's then the beginning of a real-world programming and a more hardware interfacing into our micro, like um, adding the buzzer, switches, uh, LCD to name some external device uh, that is needed for building the man machine interface as a front panel of an amplifier. I put a link on the description below on how to get the basic schematic so you can go ahead with your own adventure ahead of my video tutorials. Guys, good luck and I hope you enjoy building the hardware and enable the hardware using software. Thank you guys. If you have comments and suggestions, let me know on the comment below. Thanks for watching and subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.